Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I am Rachel from Rachel Reads. If you are new to this channel then welcome. Today I'm going to be doing a video titled Dun 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 Books I never would have read if I wasn't a teacher. I have been trying to think of different ways that I can bring in my teaching background into my channel and this is an easy way I thought I could do that. So today I'm going to be talking about six novels, one play and two picture books. Obviously I have read more books than that for my teaching but these are the these are the couple that I chose to speak about. So stay tuned. Also while I've got you here I have started an Instagram account dedicated to reading if you would like to subscribe, I will leave the link on the screen right here. So please go along and follow me and keep up to date with what I am reading. If you have an Instagram account, please leave your details below so I can go and comment, uh, follow you back. The first book that I am going to talk about today is Half in the South. Okay, and I actually have this in copy. This is one of my school's copies and you can see my little notes up there. So. If you're not, not aware of Half in the South, it is a book that was written in 1949 and it is an Australian classic. So it's all about family hardship after World War II and how people struggled uh, to live with poverty. So I read this year, this year with my Year 10 Extension Literature class. They struggled to get into it, but I really particularly enjoyed this and I never would have read anything like this on my own. I, didn't, I did not get to pick the books that we studied this year. This was picked by a superior, but I'm glad she did. It's got so many interesting themes such as poverty, rape, abuse, alcoholism, and it is just really a really good read. The language is difficult. There were words that I have never come across, Australian idioms that just aren't used anymore. So I was keeping track, uh, keeping a list of words and I was going to look them up you can still make sense of the writing without knowing those words but you know when, when you were doing a deep in-depth study you really do need to understand everything in the text my as I said my students quite struggled with this it is not a big book at all it's only 200 pages I thought I would smash this out in you know two two sittings it actually took me a couple of weeks to read because it is quite quite consuming and quite taxing to read. When I was, when we were studying this book, I did actually realize that it was not intended to be a novel. It was, it was actually a series published in a newspaper and then it won a competition and got published later on. And when you read the novel, you can really tell that because it's quite sporadic. And if you think about what a plot should look like, so you've got your um, exposition, you've got your rising action, your climax, your falling action, your resolution, and then um, your conclusion. That's that's the standard plot. Uh, this does not follow that at all. I got my students to draw what they thought, like a picture of what they put, thought the plot looked like, and it was like a, um, you can imagine like what a, what's it called when they, when they measure your heart rate? That's, that's what it looked like. Um, but it's a good study and it's worth the read if you like Australian classics or if you're just looking for some post-World War II literature. Um, it was a very good read. You'll notice that a couple of these books are Australian and that's because in our curriculum we do actually need to study Australian authors and Australian literature and that's I suppose why I'm probably on a bit of an Australian literature kick at the moment and enjoying reading so many Australian authors. It's not something I traditionally looked at. So another book that we looked at, I know I said I was talking about novels, but this isn't actually a novel. It's a collection of short stories and it is Minimum of Two by Tim Winton. So I've never actually read any Tim Winton before. If you haven't heard of him, he is one of Australia's most iconic writers. He has a very, like, um, it's a very beautiful way of writing, very into imagery and this collection common themes that we looked at were loss, family, um, depression, and they have, Tim Winton has a fascination with the water. So there's some really beautiful imagery of the beach in Perth. I really enjoyed this collection of short stories. We didn't study all of them. We studied the first 
One, two, three, four, five, six. We studied the first six short stories and there are 14 in total. My particular favourite was Forest Winter, which is the first collection. Um, no memory comes. The water was dark and it went forever and minimum of two. The consensus in my class was they, they all quite liked the water was dark and went down forever, forest, winter, and minimum of two. So my students actually had to write a creative adaption from this novel and those creative stories were so good. Again, I studied this is my year 10 extension literature class. Unfortunately, I don't have them again this semester. They are going to join the year 11s because they are so accelerated and yeah, I'm really sad, but I really love that class and I love studying minimum of two with them. And this was published in the 80s. Now, the rest of these books I don't actually have a copy of. It just so happened that I was tidying at my desk on Tuesday and I grabbed these. They need to be returned to the library because I don't really, I don't usually buy school books myself unless I particularly enjoy them. I probably won't go and purchase these myself. Um, if I teach them again, I'll just grab them out from the library again because we can, as teachers, we can hire them out for the year at the school library. So the next book that I'm going to talk about is Holes by Louis Satcher. And I loved this book so much. I'll put it up on the screen here. If you've never read Holes, please do it. It's an American novel. It's middle years. I studied it with my year seven class last year. And it is about a group of delinquent children who are sent to like um, a youth camp in the middle of the desert and their punishment or their community service so to speak is to dig holes so the warden it, there's all this mystery behind why they're digging holes and the main character uh, believes that they are looking for something and he actually finds something uh, there is actually a movie for this book as well which i watched in my class and i'll leave the link in the description if i can find one and it is so funny and so cute um, watching the movie was actually the reward for my students once they had finished this was also a creative writing adaption for them and they were so cute my students loved this book unfortunately we're not studying it anymore it was probably a little bit too advanced for my students they really struggled with reading it I had quite a low literacy class but they really engaged in the story and it just meant that I had to do a lot of the do a lot of read alouds and we had to do a lot of support with the students but it is such a good story and I'm so glad I got to read it and hopefully when I get go back to year seven they'll bring something back in but I don't think they will they've gone more towards mentor texts and I'm going to come back to that in a minute. The next book that I read because I was a teacher is Bridge to Terabithia. Now we didn't actually do a novel study of Bridge to Terabithia, we did that this is a film study and the movie is beautiful. I cried so many times in class and I wear mascara to school and I would get smudges under my eyes so my students would think it was so funny. I don't know if I said but I studied this my year sevens last year as a film study and the students had to write an analytical essay and we were looking at the theme of friendship in the film but because I was teaching this I decided I would pick up the the book and have a read of that just so I was a little bit more familiar with the inspiration for the movie and I really enjoyed it it's worth a read again it's another YA novel it has some really quite touching themes it deals with loss and friendship and bullying and you know it's a really good story for young young adult actually I would probably not call it a YA I'd probably call it middle years again I'm sorry if you can hear my washing machine in the background I'm trying to get all of my washing done before the weekend starts because it's Friday afternoon right now and I don't want to spend my weekend doing my washing so again my students didn't read Bridget Terabithia but I did we really enjoyed the film and I would highly recommend it if you are looking to do a film study with your class if you are not a teacher and you're just watching this for you know for funsies then I would recommend getting a hold of Bridge Terabithia by Catherine Patterson and having a read of that because it was a great read. Okay the next book that I'm going to talk about is kind of a cheat. Technically I haven't taught this book but we do teach it at my school and I did teach the film at a previous school but I had to read this book for my degree and we had to analyse uh, if you don't know I did a teaching degree a Bachelor of Education and we had to analyze this book 
and decide if it was appropriate for its targeted age range. And the book that I'm talking about, I will put an image in here, is The Hunger Games. So I'll quickly talk about why, why you might teach The Hunger Games in school and then I'll talk about why I would or would not recommend it. So in the Australian curriculum in year nine, students actually learn about dystopia and that is what they study for their creative writing and they have to they study a dystopia and then they have to produce their own. So in year nine, we look at a variety of different dystopias and the Hunger Games film is one of the books that we look at. Now, if you did not see my last video, you will know that why I did not teach you know, in English semester one, I will be teaching it semester two. I've picked up that class now that I've dropped my year 10 literature class. So I will actually be teaching the Hunger Games film. And the Hunger Games is good because kids are already engaged in it. They've used, they've quite often seen the movie and it has those basic elements of a dystopia and the kids generally enjoy it. They really like Katniss, they like Peter, they love, they like the little love story. So that, that's the reason why I'm putting this in. I had to actually study The Hunger Games at university and decide if it was appropriate for 13 and 14 year olds. We had to write an essay on that. And that's why I'm saying I had to read this book, you know, because I'm a teacher. The next book that I'm going to talk about falls into the same category. I've never actually taught this book, but I did have to write about it at university in order to get my, my education degree. And that is Skullduggery Pleasant by Derek Landy. I did not enjoy this book at all. It is very much a middle years book about a detective named Skullduggery Pleasant. I didn't like it, but I do know that quite a lot of my students do like this book. Our students have to do a lot of reading. They hire their own books up from the library. And quite often I see at least one student per class, I would say, with a copy of Skullduggery skullduggery pleasant. They are quite popular. As an adult I did not enjoy reading it and it is definitely appropriate for that middle years age range. Okay I've got three more pieces of literature that I'm going to talk about. The next one is Richard III by Shakespeare which is a play. I, if you do not know, I consider myself a history teacher. I do not consider myself particularly an English teacher but I do teach English. So when I was teaching in England I got to pick Shakespeare play to teach with my year eight. With my year sevens, I taught A Midsummer's Night Dream. However, I have already read this, that's why I'm not talking about A Midsummer's Night Dream in this film. I, I studied that myself in high school, so I'm not going to talk about that. But Richard III, I did read because I am a teacher. I picked this play because I really like studying The War of the Roses. And I figured I could bring in a lot of history elements to the study of this text. My students really enjoyed the play and they really liked analysing did Shakespeare actually create a true representation of Richard III. So that was a cool study. And if you are looking to, to bring some Shakespeare elements into your class, I would recommend Richard III. However, I would do it for an older class. I found year eight struggled with the language. I'd probably bring it into more year 10 or year 11. The last two books that I have read because I'm a teacher are both picture books and no I did not read these when I was teaching primary school which I have done numerous times. I read these when I was teaching year seven comparative essay writing. So one of the easiest ways to teach comparative writing is to make sure that students really understand the text. So to go back to basics and pick two engaging picture books that have a lot in common. So we picked Ollie and the Wind. I, I can't pronounce his last name. This was a source of great trouble for me last year when I was teaching this. It's Ronjoy Gouche I'm going to go with. I'm sorry if I've said that wrong and I will leave a copy of the book up here for you. And this is a beautiful story about a little boy who's lonely and becomes friend with the wind. And it is a really sweet story. And we, my, I had my students compare this story to Dan and Diesel, which is about a little blind boy and his dog and how they're friends. So we compared these two stories for how they show friendship and how they show loss. And they were, it was just really beautiful and the kids really liked them. At the start, some of my higher students really fought against me because they're like, oh, miss, I don't want to read a picture book. I'm too small. But once we kind of got past it, they were like, oh, 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 
oh and I loved it. So they are some of the books that I've read because I'm a teacher. I'm sure there are others but they're just the top ones that come to mind. I haven't been teaching for a super long time so there will be more books that come into this category and I'm sure I can make another video about it in the future. If you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe. If you would like to see more videos about my teaching or combining my teaching with my reading please let me know because it is a big part of my life and I am happy to share that with you if this is something you enjoy. If you do not want to hear about my read, uh, my teaching, please just let me know in the comments and I will make less of these videos. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you later. Bye!